Quantum Science of Psychedelics, Chapter 2, The Maya and Their Calendar System. A brief history of Mayan culture. Who were the Maya who developed this quantum science and built these temples? Well, they were Native American people who lived, and still live, in current-day southern Mexico and parts of Central America. They form part of the cultural context that archaeologists refer to as Mesoamerica, which also includes people such as the Almecs, the Apotecs, Mixtecs, and Aztecs. The Mayan population in ancient times has been estimated to be 8 million, and their largest city, Tikal, with 8,000 people, was one of the largest cities in the world. Paris and London at this time may have had about 1,000 inhabitants each. Like the Greeks once did, the Maya lived in many competing city stages and entertained interests in science and philosophical matters. In contrast, the Aztecs, similarly to the Romans, created a military-based empire. Yet, the Mesoamerican cultures are actually much closer to our own time than those of the Greeks and Romans, and the Roman Empire precedes the Aztec Empire by more than a thousand years. It is thus not really right to talk about the Mayan as an ancient people. If you want to be accurate, they fall between the ancient civilizations and our modern world, and it is partly for this reason that their science may provide a bridge between us and the ancient world. The classic Mayan civilization, about 200 CE, to 800, 830 CE, which had developed an advanced science, had not just popped up out of nowhere. The cultural of the May, of the of the Mayas, their most important crop of the Mayas, excuse me, the cultivation of the Mayas. Would you would you guys guess that I actually am dyslexic? It's not bad, right? It's not bad. Reading aloud it, it helps enormously. Um, if you have a little bit of dyslexia, <clears throat> the classic. Mayan civilization, which had developed an advanced science, had not just popped out of nowhere. The cultivation of mace, their most important crop, can be traced back to about 5,000 years ago. There are also large pre-classic sites, such as El Miardo and Keralts, which collapsed around 50 CE. In El Miardo, the mythological, the mythology of the Popol Yule, Vu, the so-called Bible of the Maya, Kul, had already been art artistically expressed in reliefs. However, it was during the ninth Bactuan in their long count calendar that the building of the pyramids in the jungle mushroomed and stable monarchies emerged. At this time, their systems of writing and calendars exploded and they generated the intellectual and they generated the intellectually most advanced culture, cultural indigenous to the American continent. The accomplishments of the other Mesoamerican Mesoamerica's predate this achievement, however. There is the so-called epi almac form of writing, which may go back to about 500 BCE, and the earliest calendar inscriptions were found at the Zapotec site in Mont Albin, 550 BCE, in the state of Oaxia. <clears throat> this is, um, like, historically, this is all pretty new for me. Didn't, I didn't know some of this. The classic Mayan cities which their pyramids were ruled by dynasties of kings who often sought to legitimize their power by referring to the, cal the, calendri calendrical, the calendrical facts from their own life histories. An important task of these kings, such as the great Pakal in Paliqua, the bird jaguar in Yaxchilan, each city-state had a dynasty of its own was to conduct ceremonies and to act as intermediaries with the divine, much like Egyptian pharaohs. Whoa, that gives me chills. The Mayan ceremonies included the offering of the blood of the king and the queens, especially at significant shifts points in the Mayan calendar, to aid in their communication with the gods. The Maya believed in a plethora, plethora, excuse me. <clears throat> the Maya believed in a plethora of gods, or maybe we should say entities in the spirit world, many of whom were involved in the passage of time or in creation. Mayan society can be said to have been calendar, calendo, calendrocratic, calendrocratic, calendrocratic in the sense that it was ruled by the calendar. The erections of steles and altars were based on calendrical shift points. And at such times, Mayan priests consulted their books to make prophecies, we're getting into the idea of what cosmology is and how it's mathematically well mapping patterns.
and noticing that they repeat over large periods of time. In addition to these ceremonies conducted by the kings, the Maya participated in and watched a ball game that was pres presumably half competitive and half cosmic drama. Artistic productivity was high. The weaving of today's Mayan women can be tracked back to the cosmology of the past. Despite all this creativity, within a very short time frame, before the year 830 CE, ending the 10th Bakhtang, their, po their political system collapsed, and all their major cities of the classic Mayan civilization, except Koba, were abandoned. The last long count dates from Plequia, Zakchilian, Kalakumal, Quiyargua, Capuan, and Tikal were written in 799, 808, 810, 810, 820, and 830, respectively. To modern historians who gen generally deny the influence of the wave movements on the history, the sudden dissection of their cities, desertion, the sudden desertion of their cities hasn't presented a mystery. Several explanations to the demise has been promoted, has been promoted such as warfare, rebellion, religion, change, natural catastrophes, and more recently, climate change. But convincing evidence for any of these has not been found. For my part, I believe that the real reason for the downfall of the classic Maya can be found in the quantum waves underlying the evolution of their civilization, which is something I will return to later. As remember me reading a bunch about Daniel Quinn, um, he talked about this. Um, how it was a meme change. They understood that the meme of their culture was changing and that it was consuming them. And so they abandoned their cities to go back to the jungle in an effort to change the meme of their society. But why and how, how could you have so much faith that you could abandon and walk away from your city? <laughs> They're open to quantum wave shifts. They knew something bigger than them was happening and they were in tune enough with it to be experiencing it. So the idea of walking away from their politics and societies um, didn't seem like that big of a step or risk for them. And then the irony is, uh, as Daniel Quinn said in, um, in his book, uh, we've come so far, the world is small now, we can't just return to the jungle. And if these quantum waves, this book is starting to allude to, do happen over you know, every so many eons. And the Mayans predicted that it did happen in 2012. And I don't know about you guys, but something big did shift in my personal psychology and emotional body and experience and reality around that. Maybe this... <laughs> Maybe everything's right on track. Uh, I digress. <clears throat> Despite the class, the collapse of the classic culture, which had its centuries, its centers in the Mexican streets of Chihuahuas and Campchi, Aipapi, and in the current day Guatemala, the high civilization of the Maya did not come to an end. Their civilization evolved into a so-called post-classic culture father farther north, centered around Chichuan Itza, found, founded in the year 843 CE on the Yucatan Peninsula. In contrast to the earlier dynastic rule, this new civilization seems to have been completely dominated by the worship of the plumed or feathered serpent called the Mayan Kaku, Kakulakan, Kakulakan, but better known under the Aztec name Quasicotl. Uh, which came to serve as the guiding principle for their lives and entire civilization. However, the post-classic culture also collapsed around 1220 CE, and from that point onward, the Mayan prevailed on a less grandiose scale in the so-called League of Mayapan. When the Spanish arrived in the Yucatan in 1517 CE, the, con the conversion of the Mayan to the Christianity began. As part of this conversion campaign, a number of their books were burned by the Catholic bishop Diego de Lando in, the auto de, in an auto de fe in the town of Mani in 1562. Motherfuckers, stop burning other people's books. That is just so, god damn that stupid, stupid ignorant motherfuckers. Just erasing knowledge because they're scared. Hmm.
Their last independent kingdom was conquered in 1697, and after this, the pre-Columbian mind, culture, and science seemed to be forever gone as a result of the suppression by the conquistadors and the Catholic priests. Nobody likes you guys. Nobody. Nobody likes you guys. <clears throat> in the last decades of the 12th century, the Maya also suffered much... Fuck dogma. Fuck dogma. Fuck dogma. Your entire scope is just so ignorant. Fuck dogma. <clears throat> the Maya also suffered from from much massacres waged against them in the prolonged civil war in Guatemala. <coughs> the Maya, however, have never disappeared as a people and have kept parts of their ancient customs alive until the past time, until the present time. In the centuries that followed the Spanish conquest, knowledge of the classic Maya has increased through a series of archeological discoveries and they have gradually gained the attention of the rest of the world. The explorer John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Cathwood whose accounts of the lost civilization fascinated European and American audiences, wrote about their travels in the Yucatan in the 1840s. A few surviving Mayan books today total about four, such as, a, as the Dresden Codex, appeared in, in dusty corners of European libraries, libraries and from, from them, the German libertarian Ernest Forestman was able to elucidate, 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 sometimes, guys, sometimes, I'm shaky because I yelled at, I yelled at uh, Catholicism and dogma, it's, you know, maybe there are better ways of expressing oneself, I'm trying to work on that, anyways, <clears throat> uh, elucidates the, the basics of the ancient calendar system, most important after World War II, the Russian eth ethnologist Yuri Norozov deciphered their glyphs, uh, form of writing. Since then, epigraphs have been decoded, many of the inscriptions from the Mayan steles, so that we now have a better picture of what the Mayan world was like. In addition to these codices, we also have knowledge from the Mayan descendants, especially the day keepers, who have kept their sacred, their sacred 260-day calendar, so-called Zoklin, alive for more than two millennia. Uh, that necklace that I have around my neck a lot, it's got like the lotus there and the one there. The, that, that's, that's the Zulkin, that symbol. It's actually just um, a 260 day calendar <laughs> uh, for more than two millennia. In 1987, Jose Arguelos wrote The Mayan Factor, which contained ideas about the meaning of the Mayan science and brought many of the participants in the so called har harmonic convergence based on their dates in the calendar. This opened up to a new audience to the Maya among spirituality attuned people and the time before the presumed end of the Mayan calendar in 2012 created an interest in their calendar like never before. This interest has however receded in the years that followed. The Mayan calendar system, the Mayan calendar did not come to an end in 2012. That's, that's not how that works at all. No. Uh, the Mayan calendar system, before describing the Mayan calendar, I would like to point out a couple of Complicating factors when it comes to how to, how we may look at this. First, from this sort of expose of the Mayan history, it should be clear that the Maya had sig had significant ups and downs, and that their civilization was not static. The same can be also see said about their calendars and science. To talk about the Mayan calendar as a set of concepts thus gives the false impression that the calendar has remained constant over the course of history. Except for the sacred 260-day calendar, it has not. Over time, the Maya have followed calendars of different types in order to develop a system of evolution or of prophecy, which really is the same thing if the science is right. It's true. It's true. Much like modern science, they were trying different models out to see which calendars would be useful for understanding the universe and the changes in their world. Second, it is not right to talk about the Mayan calendar in the singular, since the Maya actually used a calendar system, which included many interconnected calendars. You can easily catalog a hundred calendars from ancient times, but this high number is essentially misleading as many of these calendars belong to the same system. Some of the indig individual calendars, like the long count and many others connected to the 260 day sacred calendar. The Hunaku and the Zolkin. <clears throat> I added those in. That wasn't in the book. Uh, 
uh, were part of the quantum science that I discuss in this book. As I will argue, it is many cons connections among different levels of this particular system that now allow us to recreate a coherent holistic science from their calendar. There were, however, other Mayan calendars based on prime numbers and on cycles, subjects to Newtonian su physics, such as those tracking the phases of Venus, the revolutions of Saturn, Mars, or solar eclipses, which I do not address in this book. That's just too much, too complicated. I don't blame them. <laughs> Third, our very use of the term calendar is misleading when applied to the Maya. For a modern person, a calendar suggests a system of keeping track of the passage of time to aid in making plans and keeping track of appointments. The Gregorian calendar we currently use for such purposes is arbitrarily designed and the various days, weeks, and months that is subdivided into lack meaning and and of themselves, lack meaning in and of themselves. This is the deep contrast um, between, between the Gregorian and the Mayan calendar system in which the different phases and times, time periods have distinct qualities that help us understand the evolution of the cosmos. The last thing I want to do is to give impression that the Mayan calendar was just a calendar, a timekeeping device. Rather, it was a work of science and progress over a long period of time, aiming to identify the underlying rhythms according to which our universe evolves. As a consequence, I do not think that the Mayan calendar system is something that we should look on as part of the past, but rather as something we should continue to develop. At least, this is how I look at my task of understanding and interpreting it as a scientist. It's science the same way that psychology is science. It really is. Taking these factors into account, it is incumbent on the scholar to specify which Mayan calendar he or she is referring to, and naturally this choice depends on what kind of questions the scholar is asking. If you want to follow the agricultural season, you might want to follow the 360-day Hav calendar. Since I'm interested in evolution in the large sense, it makes sense to follow the Tunbe system. Right. It's a harmon. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a slam. Yeah, I'm going to get it all wrong. Slam sale. Including the so-called long count that dominated in the classic era, as there is so much empirical evidence to indicate that this actually describes the long-term evolutionary process of life in the universe. It is this calendar system that, as we will see, provides the basis for macrocosmic quantum science. This quantized tune-based system is fundamentally different the Gregorian calendar in all and all other calendars in the world that are based on the revolutions of the earth around the sun or of the moon around the earth or calendars describing the movements of the planets as followed by modern day astrologers. Such movements of celestial bodies are now all totally predictable based on Newtonian science. Because of the current bias, Newtonian phys physicalities, people who watch documentaries or go to the Mayan sites are always told by the guides they are about astronomical accomplishments in the ancient times, such as determining the length of the year or the revolutions of Venus. Although the Maya did possess accurate astronomical knowledge, this knowledge is, in my view, essentially beside the point, is essentially beside the point, and mostly serves to hide the fact that the Maya had a quantum calendar, which is much more important for us living now to know about. Well. Dominance, dominance of the Newtonian science always played out strongly as an interest in the Mayan calendar, gaining new heights prior to the year 2012. In contrast to the nine-level model of the Maya themselves, who used to describe this shift in the Tortuguero monument, most people then came to believe in a classical Newtonian explanation of the so-called end date, a 26,000-year pre 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 processional cycle would purport purportedly generate a galactic alignment on December 21st, 2012, that would dramatically change the world. This became the story pumped out by big media such as Hollywood Movies 2012 and the Discovery Channel. There was, however, nothing in the Mayan text to support this idea. Among thousands of ancient calendrical inscriptions, not a single one talked about a galactic alignment or a cycle of 26,000 years in contrast to what many have been led to believe. Rather than on a Mayan source, this 2012 story had instead been based on the use of modern astronomical software, the Newtonian science, in the form of processional cycle favored by astrologers. 
knowledge about the Mayan, Mayan quantum science, including that from the Torto Comero monument, was then almost non-existent or suppressed, and the fact-checking that always should be part of science was not undertaken. As a result, you know, I I knew this, I Googled this, I like, and I'm not, I'm nobody, I'm not smart, I'm not, I'm not like, <laughs> I didn't have to dig deep, is what I mean. <clears throat> as a result, the procession of the equinoxes as an explanation of the Mayan calendar has for many not only blocked block, block, what? not only block the road to an understanding of how psychedelics work, but also left them without some very meaningful tools for understanding what is happening in the world today. The quantized Mayan calendar. The pathway to deeper understanding of realities requires the study of quantum science of the classic Maya and the nine non-physical waves of creation that it is based on. The best illustration of this science may be the one literally cut in the stone conveyed by the pyramid of plume serpent or Kakuklan, the in, chik, in chicken itza, chicken itza, this spectacular pyramid, which is visited by some 2.5 million people annually, was recently voted one of the seven wonders of the world. And it is one of the most clearly described, the overall Mayan calendar system. To illustrate the calendar, the pyramid has nine levels replicating nine sequentially activated creation waves, conveying different cosmic quantum states. I took the photograph in figure 2.6 at the spring equinox, the particular day that the pyramid displays an additional noteworthy feature. Excuse me, I'm just gonna, just for you guys, in the, that's the photo. Um, <clears throat> Late in the afternoon, shadows from the terrace generate a wave of seven triangles of light and six of darkness, equaling 13 phases which appear on the side of the staircase. This is the wave of Kakuka, forming the scales on the back of the plume serpent. These waves of the seven peaks and six valleys emanate from the top of the pyramid, which symbolizes the center of the universe. The pyramid is really an embodied embodiment in stone of the main features of the evolutionary plan of the cosmos, which is developed in accordance with shifting quantum states. This pyramid, to this day, has a strong attractive power. Every year, some 100,000 people, many of whom are local Maya, gather here to celebrate the arrival of spring signaled by this remarkable light show. Although the Spanish found this pyramid 500 years ago, it was only in 1946 that Maya visitors rediscovered the light show, which indicates the awareness its builders had of the wave nature of evolution. To have built this pyramid so that the wave movement appears on the staircase only at the equinox is truly a remarkable architectural feat, and anyone who watches it will be quite taken by the light show created by the people about a thousand years ago. The light show also tells us that the message of this pyramid is very important and that it conveys the mind view of evolution in a, in a nutshell. <clears throat> in the big picture, evolution in its forms is created by nine quantum waves, which with a different frequency have been subsequently activated on top of each other and developed through seven peaks and six valleys. The pyramid of Kakla Khan is one of the last pyramids the Mayan built and is arguably one of the best that they one that best distills the science they had ac ac accumulated based on their calendrical studies. <clears throat> if you look on this merely as a creation of the ancient people who revere a snake, you might miss the point. The knowledge of the pyramid conveys in it fact much more advanced than the modern science. In figure 2.7, the list of these nine waves together with the Mayan names for the half periods, the durations in the year, the full periods, their frequencies, and their respective dates of activities is presented. As we can see from this, the lowest of the waves, the first wave, column three, has a full period of 2.52 billion years. The first quantum wave of our reality that lasted two. 52 billion years according to the Maya. Um, I will just hold this up to you guys, give you an idea of the next one as well. It's on there. And just pause the screen.
screen, I guess, to check it out. <clears throat> Exceedingly long period and correspondingly very low frequency of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 18 hertz shown in column 4 is unheard, is unheard of for macroscopic quantum theory. And so when incorporating such time frames, Mayan science explained beyond what modern science has done. The Mayan inclusion of waves with such long periods in their calendar system is explained by the fact that theirs was a holistic science based on the principle of as above, so below, aiming to describe what happens at the levels that are the important for human life. Modern science, in contrast, is, is essentially reductionistic and tries to explain biology, psychology, soci sociology, and so on by what occurs at lower levels. And so its motto would best be described by as a below, so above. From the bottom level at the first wave, with every step climbed of the pyramid, the frequency increases tenfold. And so we can see from column three in figure 2.7, the wave periods will correspondingly decrease frequencies of the wave periods being inversely related. The second wave will, for instance, have a period of 2,520 over 20, which equals 126 million years. The amount million years and amounts to a 20-fold increase in frequency compared to the first wave. When you arrive at the ninth and the highest level, which has a wave period of only 36 days, the frequency of this will be a remarkable 2.4 times 10 to the 10th times higher than the lowest wave. The first shifts between these frequencies are in fact quantum leaps, meaning that no frequencies are allowed in between those that are listed here. These various waves and their corresponding periods decreasing with a factor of 20 with every step are also expressed on Stele 1 and in Koba, figure 2.8. I also show that to you guys, as well as one in the Yaxilan, which shows how they are activated on top of each other. Why there are more than nine waves in described on the Koba Stella is not quite clear. One suggestion that has been made is that the exceedingly long time periods are part of the stele may reflect seven centuries, seven entities during which the tree of life slumbered between creations. Whoa, this makes me feel really weird. <laughs> Good. The frequency of the higher order system, as we can see in the column four of figure 2.7, like in Koba Stele 1, in figure 2.8 are based on multiples of 20 of the 360 day year called called Tun by the Maya. This 360 day year was in ancient times seen all over the world as a spiritual year, but it was only among the Maya that it became the basis of a system of wave frequencies increasing by a factor of 20 at each level. For these, the Maya used the names Katan equals 20 Tun, Bakhtan equals 400 Tun, Piktun equals 8,000 Tun, and so on. For half the wave periods and a significant aspect of the calendar system was that it identified the shift points between such time periods. The step-by-step -step activation of new creation waves with 20-fold increased frequencies is the reason that evolution of life in all its aspects has accelerated since the birth of the universe. Yes, it fucking has. Already in this experience of a sped up, of a speed up of time, which is quite accurate at the current time, we find a phenomena that can be explained by the quantum leaps leading up to the highest frequencies at the top of the pyramid. As far as I know, no other calendar system provides any kind of explanation for the acceleration of time or the course of evolution of the universe. In figure 2.7, the dates when each of the nine waves was activated, column five, are listed. The activations have taken place sequentially so, the, so that initially, after the birth of the universe 16.4 billion years ago, it was only the first wave that was active. Starting with the second wave 820 million years ago, the other waves have since been activated and added to the first wave to create higher worlds at the, at the time points listed. Over time, 
This has generated an increasingly complex interference pattern formed by these waves, which is what underlies the increasingly complex universe that is being created. The morphogenic quantum fields generated by the nine creation waves is thus not static, but rather has evolved over time to what it is now. Hence, Maya quantum science provides a model of creation that explains not only the acceleration of time, but also the increasing complexity of the universe over time. Because the nine waves has been activated subsequentially, it, it is only since March 9, 2011, that all the waves are running in a parallel and creating the world in concert. <laughs> this activation of all nine waves is what the Torta Gomero monument refers to as the appearance of Bolan Yukati, who, in his full regalia, the consistent difference of 20 between each frequency allows for harmony, harmoni harmonies, harmonious relationships and meaningful, meaningful synchronous, synchronization between the waves, something that is presumably a nece necessary for a successful creation of a universe. Collectively, these nine waves of quantum field, which at the current time defies, defines all the potentialities of the human beings. As far as I know, this is the only macroscop macroscopic quantum science that exists and has a, has a preface foundation. In the following text, when I refer to quantum science or quantum theory, I am referring to the Mayan macroscopic quantum science based on these preface frequencies and dates for activation of the nine waves, shown in figure 2.7. <clears throat> the microscopic aspects of the quantum science, which have been extensively explored by modern physicists, I essentially leave out of this book. And I'm sure if you looked hard enough, you find that they do tie perfectly together, which I'm sure our author has studied at great length. <coughs> Clearly, the Mayan calendars are not then inco interconnected in a mathematically coherent way. But where does this now lead us? Well, it would lead nowhere and be largely pointless exercise if it were not for the fact that there is so much empirical evidence to demonstrate that these waves are actually driving the evolution of the cosmos. To have a first sense of this, we may look at how the terraces on the pyramid of Chiquitán Itza correspond to what the Maya would refer to as a distinct worlds. A world, in this context, is not the product of one wave, but of the resulting interference pattern created by all the waves up to the given central level. Hence, as an example, if you were alive in the year 1 CE, you would be living in the sixth world, which was a product of the interference pattern of the six lower, lowest waves, or, if you like, a composite of the corresponding quantum states. The idea that humanity goes through different worlds or ages is a common theme in many traditions, not the least among Native American peoples. The Aztecs, for example, talked about the Ninth World Underworlds uh, terminology I have used in the past, and the Hopi about nine universes. Each of the nine worlds listed in figure 2.9 has particular characteristics and is experienced differently. Why this is... why this is will be explained, why this is will be explained in the following chapters rather than an assorted mixture of phenomena appearing at random points in time, evolution in this quantum model is driven by waves activated and developed in accordance with predefined logic, beginning with the birth of the universe. The lowest waves, first through fourth waves, now I'm just going to quickly show you guys, this is figure 2.9, so you want to go back pause on that or something. <clears throat> um, fourth waves, which drives biological evolution, form the basis of the pre uh, and prepare for the highest waves, fifth through nine waves, which drive the spiritual and mental evolution of humanity. The combined actions of these waves allows processes created by different waves to be co coordinated so that the critical new events necessary for evolution appear at the right times, sometimes very obviously as quantum leap. The Mayan name for the universal pyram pyramidal structure within which, within which such quantum leaps between worlds takes place was the Bolan Yukati Ku, the Nine Step Temple. This model of evolution based on waves comes quite close to the view of the French philosopher Henri Burgos, Bergson who held that the consciousness was not created by our brains, but rather existed in a field outside, much like 
that created by electromagnetic waves. This was also proved by a gentleman named Stuart Hameroff. Look him up. He's a, he's a quantum um, mechanic scientist and an anesthesiologist, and he won a Nobel Prize for proving that consciousness is actually being received like, uh, through the human biology. It is, it's around us. It's not spontaneously occurring through us. <clears throat> Controversy. His work was the basis for the idea that the human mind serves as a reducing valve for consciousness, which Aldous Huxley later took up in his Doors of Perception, a seminal book regarding the nature of psychedelics. More recently, Graham Hancock, whose book Supernatural introduced me to this topic, has advocated the same basic idea. The Mayan idea of the waveform, the plumed serpent bringing life and consciousness to human beings is consistent with this view of the brain as a receiver. In fact, the reason the modern worldview is at a loss to explain altered states of consciousness, including those generated by psychedelics, is that the Mayan quantum science has been ignored and misrepresented for a long time, with the result that is essentially the lost. Within psychedelic research today, concepts such as DMT world or the ayahuasca world are used as names for the altered realities generated to expose high levels of these substances. I'm not arguing that any such world generated by psychedelics is identical um, with any of the nine worlds listed in figure 2.9, but as we will see later, they are definitely connected, if nothing else. The only reason different psychedelic worlds exist to begin with is that the universe is inherently multidimensional and this multidimensionality has been created by a composite of different quantum states. I'll say as someone who's a very active dreamer and has some um, kinesthetic synesthesia, I find that a lot of the places and realities I visit, even in dreams, um, that there's identified markers. Like there are different dream worlds that a whole bulk of the population dreams in. One of the most common is if like you find yourself in a city at night and it's just weird and the tower, everything, look around man, the towers are leaning. It's, it's a city built on bamboo poles. All of the structure below is like coming up the whole universe. If you find yourself in an airplane flying over the city at night, like look down, you'll see the bamboo poles. If you can, if you can arrive consciously as yourself inside your dreams and have that lucid experience, you can explore some of these landscapes for what they, like I said, these are all cross patterns of quantum waves he's talking about. So these dream pockets of reality, places that we might all share or go to in dream state, like they're real at least for the experience of the awareness. Um, but it doesn't have the underlying waves that create a stable physical reality. That's why it's just a dreamscape. Anyways, I digress again, <clears throat> but look around. If you're, if you're in a city at night, look around and uh, if, if you're able to come loose in your dream and check out and see if you're in, in the bamboo city or dark city, it's really, it's cool. That's just names that I give them, but look for the bamboo poles. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, where are we? If nothing else, the only reason, the only different psychedelic worlds exist to be, to begin with is that the universe is inherently multidimensional and this multidimensionality is created by a composite of different quantum states. To understand how psychedelics can facilitate these leaps, we must, however, first understand more about how the cosmos is organized and how the nine different worlds in figure 2.9 are created. Many you may already wonder about the nature of these waves, which were widely recognized by ancient people as serpents. I do not think we can understand them as any of uh, the recognized waves. Oh, excuse me, that happens. Oh, that's how it goes. Um, waves of modern physics, such as the electromagnetic, or the more recently discovered gravitational waves. Yet, as we will see, there is a very sub substantial empirical evidence for the existence of these waves. For now, I believe the best way to describe them is as life-creating geometry waves. Yeah, that's super easy. Whether they can be measured directly remains in an open, an open question, but this does not affect the fact that they are real. For those who recognize their role as drivers of the evolutionary evolution of life, a very powerful consequence is that the creation of life is the very purpose of the universe. Oh, and that's... Uh, takes us to chapter three.